Hi guys. Blake here today with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina on beautiful Lake Tanicomo. It is the last day of June, the 30th, Thursday. And I'm gonna do the one cast for you today. Today I'm starting off with a pink power worm on a itsy bitsy Bobby Garland's 164th ounce jig head, about a inch and a quarter long piece. I've got about, oh, about eight foot deep right now. I've got that on two pound line. This is my leader material there going to four pound line. And I have one of our medium size strike indicators. And I'm starting about where the public fishing docks start here. And we're just gonna work our way down and see if we can find any stalker trout down here. Another beautiful day. Touch, oh, there was a fish. All right, that's a miss on the first cast. Uh, always when I'm getting up to mess with something. Still a nice day on the lake with a low humidity. They have officially shut the water off today. They did have it running about a unit, maybe a little less earlier this morning, but it is off now. Seeing quite a few stalker fish jumping around me. That's a good sign. And it's a little bit afternoon, so I'm concentrating a little out here more in this 10 foot depth of water. Got that set at about eight foot. Oof. Missed another one. They're not biting it too hard. Um, once the sun gets high, you kind of want to scoot a little bit a little bit deeper but all the reports from all the guides this morning captain Dwayne, captain jeremy uh, steve dickey and a few others said that the bite this morning was much better than it was yesterday morning and it sounded to me like just about everybody was catching them on the pink power worm today captain tony weldely weldely uh so that they also had a decent jig bite this morning. And I've also got with me a 132nd ounce jig to free jig down here and, um, and a seven foot spin cast rod with a uh, PJ's finesse 100 ounce marabou jig all things that work pretty good down here on this end of the lake And when you're fishing these under a float with the water off, every once in a while you wanna 
scoot that bobber in, reel it in if you're using a spin cast just a little bit, move that pink worm around a touch. Give it just a little bit of extra action. Same thing if I was fishing a, the marabou jig underneath the indicator. I was hoping that there'd be a, a little bit of a school of trout kind of back here in the slower water created by Scotty's trout dock there. Not seeing quite as much action as I'd like here, so we might pull it in and go back behind the fish house. I think I'm setting over deep enough water that might be, might, might try going a little deeper too. We'll, we'll set it about 10 foot and see what happens. Nope, I'm not liking it. We're gonna turn the camera off. We're gonna go down just a ways behind the fish house. And we're gonna try again there. We'll be right back. All right. Just a short little drive here. And we are now behind the White River Fish House. 
I'm gonna go back to the pink power worm again. This uh, stretch in slower water created by the White River restaurant. Usually a spot where there's some fish and there was one right there. I'm sure earlier this morning they were probably hanging on to that pink power worm just a little bit longer. They are uh, definitely short striking at the moment. Set this just a little shallower as you scoot in towards this boardwalk. It gets a touch shallower, so I'm just going to take a foot and a half off or so. <laughs> uh, I think they're chasing it. Whenever I move it, the, this is whenever they are attempting to take it.
There we go. So the only adjustment I made there was, since I think they were chasing it, I was slowly scooting the bobber the whole time after I let it sink. And he took the bait. So, uh, there were times last summer, I remember, where when you were fishing with the water off and a float, you basically had to keep that float moving. And today might be somewhat similar. So we'll try it again. Cast it out a little farther, give some room to to pull that thing back towards the boat I'm just gonna strip the line and leave a little pause and zip there he was again so it might be that they'd potentially hit a jig a little bit better just free working a jig we'll try that in a second but they're definitely liking it moving away from them so let it sink all the way to the bottom. And yep. That's exactly how they want it today. Stalker. So this is something that's real simple. You do not have to use a fly rod to do this. You can do this on a spin cast rod, preferably a longer one, like a seven to nine foot, so that you got some room to put that thing underneath the indicator and still cast it easily. Um, if they're feeling chasey like they are right now, then I would suggest even a spoon. Spoons seem to work pretty good on the freshly stocked fish down here. If you're wondering what that screaming is, it is not somebody dying. It is the zip line that goes over the lake into the landing. thing sink down as far as I can before I start moving it because as you're moving it that fast it's actually never fully staying at that depth
All right, one more cast with the pink power worm, and then we're gonna, we're gonna try a jig. So I've got a 132nd ounce jig, sculpin, all sculpin jig, two pound line. I believe this is the Trout SOS two pound line. Yeah. Well, maybe it is the pink power worm that they're after. Oh, there was a fish. <laughs> he followed it all the way back to the boat swiping at it just couldn't get it
Okay. Well, I think we're going to call it a day there. But we thank you guys for watching. Like and share us on Facebook, and we'll get out and do it again tomorrow. Thanks, guys.